requested by the Prime Minister. The question is that the motion be agreed to. I give the call to the member for Chifley. Thank you, uh, Deputy Speaker. Earlier this year, I um, visited the uh, National September 11 Memorial uh, in Manhattan. Uh, and the Americans can be proud, and in fact the world can be proud, that uh, they had indeed uh, created there a noble uh, tribute to those who had lost their lives in those terrible events of September 11. It is a most powerful, uh, most powerful tribute, and in many cases the most powerful elements of that tribute are very personal. A watch, a wedding ring, right through to ticket stubs, to the mementos of people that uh, had gone to work that day expecting to go home at the end of the day and were felled in the most cruel uh, circumstances. There were harrowing images as well of metal hurtling into metal, of silhouettes launching themselves uh, from buildings to a cruel end. And uh, I visited there in the aftermath of the terrible events of uh, Martin Place. And uh, these separate events, September 11, December 15, uh, may prompt the question, uh, what was less cruel? Was it more humane to confront uh, the sudden loss experienced uh, on September 11, as opposed to the torture inflicted uh, through the passage of time on those held captive in Martin Place on December 15, an event that cost the lives of two people, a mother, Katrina Dawson, and a son, Tory Johnson. The truth is both situations were marked by their intense cruelty, and both are condemned with equal vigour uh, by us all, and both prompt us to attend to a vital civic purpose. Uh, much has been interpreted into the actions of the person who carried out the sin and crime of December 15, and I can't enter into the mind, and nor do I seek to enter into the mind, of someone who is prepared to abandon their own humanity by denying the continued humanity of others. His actions must be condemned, they are condemned, and they will stand condemned through the passage of time. Some say that the aim of the terrorist is to distort the way we relate to each other through fear and suspicion, and I say that this is simply an ancillary objective. The principal objective is subjugation, is subjugation. that our way of life be subjugated and that it submit to another where we have no say and where someone else has ultimate and complete dictation of the order of things. But this system of governing the affairs of people has confronted and fallen to the purity and power of the greatest of our attributes, the attribute of individual free will. Nazism fell, fascism fell, communism fell. And wherever these systems resort to bloody means of maintaining themselves, they fail because they cannot resist free will. And I was reminded of this when I saw uh, my friend, uh, the member for Kuyong, visit the, the harrowing grounds of Auschwitz 70 years after its liberation. And I read the story of how that instance of history affected your family uh, in a very personal way, and it affected the lives of six million Jews of the nine million that had lived in Europe at that time. But ultimately, through all that pain, free will prevailed, as it had to, as it should, and as it will in the face of terrorism whether it occur on our shores or whether it occur elsewhere. It's not often, I, uh, and again, my friend the member for Kuyong will know this, it is not often that I quote Winston Churchill. <laughs> but there can be no truer words expressed when it was Churchill who said, many forms of government have been tried and will be tried in this world of sin and woe. No one pretends that democracy is perfect or all wise. Indeed. It's been said that democracy is the worst form of government except all those other forms that have been tried from time to time. We may have our criticisms of the way we run ourselves, but we're all keen to preserve and enhance our way of life. And we're also asking of our fellow citizens, and I make this important point 
and I reflect on it and I recognise the weight of this point. We are asking our fellow citizens um, to undertake a significant test. We are asking them to defy a natural human reaction in the wake of December 15. And it is a reaction guided by fear and provoked by the events of Martin Place. We can't deny the anger that existed because it would be like denying our own humanity. And in a day and age where faith is subjected to questioning, and in a modern, vibrant democracy, it should be questioned and it should stay that way and be respected. But in this day and age, I think faith does have some answers and can guide us in a very positive way. Because uh, despite differing faiths, we share this in common, be it your faith, be it my faith, be it your faith. The one thing we share in common about faith is that it always urges us to be better than what we are. And in fact, it says to us all that we should not succumb to the easy, indolent reaction of emotion, that we should be better than who we are. And we should avoid the rush to hate, the retreat to defensiveness, the withdrawal from others or the false comfort that comes from an aggressive counter. We are being tested and the question is, will we succumb? And in actual fact, that test is being played out as I speak in another part of the world, where a few days ago in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, three young Muslims lost their lives. Some are urging us rightly not to rush to judgment, but the three young lives of these Muslim Americans uh, who were killed execution style is prompting an a outpouring of reaction and also prompting further thought. It was further thought that was carried in The Independent this week by Sabia Pervez, who wrote uh, in response uh, some words that I think should guide us and go to the heart of the test that I mentioned a few moments ago. She said, we've been collectively blamed, referring to Muslim Americans, we've been collectively blamed, scapegoated and attacked for not doing enough. And in doing so, we've lost sight of the simple fact that, and I importantly reflect on this, hate begets hate. The more you paint a community as foreign, as a threat, as outsiders, you risk dehumanising them. And this has happened to such an extent that when they're murdered, there's no desire to give them the same sort of attention we'd otherwise give all victims of terror. Very important words. We are being tested. But can I say, in my heart, the response I, I felt when I saw the way Sydney responded shows we have responded rightly to that test. Because Sydney siders showed the breadth and the depth uh, of their inner strength in responding to this act of terror. And I uh, pay my respects uh, to, uh, to those families, but also honour Sydney siders for the outpouring that we witnessed uh, straight after that. In fact, I was honoured to uh, be among that outpouring, and uh, I thank the Leader of the Opposition and his wife, Chloe, for allowing me to attend on that day. Uh, because uh, on that day, there was a moment uh, where, um, I have to say, it uh, seemed like grief would crush the chest as I looked at that uh, blanket of flowers. And uh, I felt the pain and hurt that accompanied those bouquets as they were laid on the concrete of Martin Place. But then a surge of admiration uh, overtook that and replaced that void. Because you recognised what we were witnessing there, what, what people were doing. We're, they were coming together and they were saying, we will be better. We will not allow terror to dictate the way we live our lives and we will unite for something that is uniquely better. It was a symbol of collectivism and unity that was truly special. And it makes me as an individual MP, and a way that I know for colleagues across party lines, uh, we uh, basically want to preserve and enhance the gift we have right here. So in closing, I want to uh, extend on behalf of the more than 100,000 residents of Chifley the deepest condolences on the loss that was experienced by the Dawson uh, and Johnson family, the strongest expression of love and support uh, to those who were forced to endure the unimaginable and the completely unacceptable. Um, I think I also express, as my colleagues in this place have, our admiration for all the New South Wales Police and other security agencies who worked uh, in very trying circumstances on that day, 
And out of this, let us rededicate ourselves in reflecting on Churchill's words, let us re rededicate ourselves to join together, regardless of politics, uh, to perfectly defend the imperfect and to preserve and enhance what we have because it is truly unique and it is something that at its heart, with free will, is worth defending. I thank the member for Chifley. The question is a motion be agreed to and I call the Chief Government Whip. Thank you very much, Mr Deputy Speaker. And, uh, I wish to 